This channel contains mature subject matter, so if you're not 19 years or older, don't watch this channel. With that being said, let's get into it. Hey everybody, it's been quite an entertaining week to say the least, but I've learned a lot and I feel like I've come out on top. I'm going to share that with you today. Before we get into the video, I'm going to give you a quick garden update of what I've been doing this past week. With the nice weather comes lots of bugs, and we've been having quite a few caterpillars land on the plants over the past week. I've been finding lots of beneficial insects around the garden, such as ladybugs and spiders. Ever since I chopped down the cover crop and did that heavy defoliation of the canopies, I haven't actually seen any aphids on the cannabis plants. I've also been spraying with raw silica, and that's said to help prevent leaf-eating insects as well. The strawberry lemonade plant was the star of my last garden update. It had a branch that was being dropped and I wasn't totally sure at the time what was causing it. And now I'm pretty much 100% sure the cause was dry pockets in the soil. I ended up pruning off everything that was dead and leaving just the small growth tips that seemed to still be good. Um, I let those go for a few days and they did absolutely nothing. So I decided to just chop the branch. I'd be sure to inspect the cut to make sure that there was no disease inside the branch and everything looked nice and light in color. There's no brown inside the branch, but you can see in the very center a little bit of uh, good capillaries and the rest is basically dried. Over this past week, I started out with uh, some molasses and I also added insect frass uh, because I've been noticing some fungal gnats. And I also used some raw silica and I just watered that in. I didn't really brew it for more than a few hours just to release the chitin from the insect frass. Also to help with the fungal gnats, I'm gonna add half of a mosquito dunk to this bucket. I thought I'd throw in this clip for you guys. This is what it feels like to be sitting between two of these giants uh, doing some low stress training. Oops, I did it again. That's the velvet bud and yes, that is a branch dropping off. But I think I caught this one just in time. I immediately pH'd a bucket of water. I dumped five gallons of water on it. Uh, when I had time, I came back to the plant. I've watered the whole garden and each plant got 20 gallons of water. All the tops that are drooping down on this plant are stemming off of this one large branch. I was going through some of my seeds and I realized that dill could be planted in July. So I decided to get some of that going. And I read the back of the pack and it says all dill varieties attract beneficial insects, including wasps that control aphids and the cabbage white butterfly. So I'm having a bit of aphid problems this year. So I'm gonna grow some dill.
during the daytime, cannabis leaves stretch upwards towards the sun and they turn across the sky as the sun moves. At nighttime, they droop down and they very much go to sleep. I'm sure some of you are wondering about the lights from inside the house shining onto the porch. The answer is no, I've never had any plants become Hermes because of the inside house lights. I know that other outdoor growers have had problems due to outside lighting. That could be due to the type of light bulb, the height of the bulb, the intensity of the bulb. I just haven't had those problems. Hey everyone, it's July 24th. I'm gonna walk through the garden with you right now. And I'm gonna talk about the dry pockets and watering these plants. <clears throat> so the velvet bud here, I guess I'll start here. You can see that the drooping branches are recovering nicely. So I think that I, I got back to it with the water just in time. And it's, you know, this one's not quite perked up yet, but I'm very pleased with, uh, with how it's recovering. The strawberry lemonade, uh, the following day it got super hot, super sunny. So I just, I had to cut that branch. You can't even see where it is though, that's growing so fast and filling in so fast. The root that was chewed on by a slug, and it's just dried over, scabbed over, it's doing good. Got a little bit of fungal gnats flying around the soil, but I did the mosquito dunks uh, a day or two ago. Ah, oh, this is kind of funny. I did not plant that sunflower. I think a bird or a squirrel must have dropped a sunflower seed from from some bird food, possibly. And uh, yeah, here it is. Okay, strawberry lemonade doing amazing. There's the branch that I chopped. I've been foliar spraying about every three days with the cast aisle soap and the silica. And because of that, I've been getting my plants pretty wet and I've had a little bit of powdery mildew on one plant. So I've been burning a little bit more sulfur. Uh, the last couple days have been overcast as well. Hash plant is doing great. Bruce Banger is banging, no complaints, not a picky plant at all. Alright, the topic of the hour, dry pockets. So these are 50 gallon pots, I'll just explain what a dry pocket is. Think of when your soil gets way too dry and it's kind of like a dry sponge where you get it wet and it doesn't absorb any water and you have to kind of hold it under water and after a while it will start to take the water in. <clears throat> if you have a concentrated area of roots in your pot, those roots will suck the water out of that area very fast compared to the rest of the pot. It will create a dry pocket. When you water your pots, the water will run around it or run through it as it would do with a, a smaller pot that's very dry or the, the very dry sponge like I just said. So what I did over this past week, I watered about eight gallons per plant and then the next day I watered another eight gallons and another eight gallons and I think it took about four days before I really got a heavy runoff coming out of the bottom of the pots to get that to happen took about I think about 18 to 20 gallons of water per plant now the reason I was doing it so slow is because I was trying to rehydrate the dry pocket so each day I would come out and I would add a bit in the morning a bit in the evening and once I felt like it was starting to absorb all the water again that's when I started doing the heavy waterings the other thing I noticed, I was going around to some pots and I could push in and right now I can feel the soil there. It's right against it. But before, 
the soil had receded inwards and when I pushed against the fabric, my finger would go in a quarter inch to three eighths of an inch. And I mean, that's a pretty good indication that the, the soil is completely dry. So that's the dry pockets. My fix is watering a lot more frequently. So I'm gonna come out here. Uh, I'm gonna water every day, sometimes twice a day, no matter the weather, uh, four to six gallons each watering. These are very thirsty girls. And on hot days or every, you know, every four days maybe, I'm gonna do a very heavy watering where I'll add probably at least 10 to 16 gallons per plant. And I kind of listen for the water running out and dripping underneath the plants, underneath the deck. And that's one of my indications of when I stop watering, when I know that it's fully saturated and I have a little bit of runoff. And I don't mind having runoff. Um, any plants in nature, the water's going to wash over the roots. Um, you know, it's a good thing. You do want to, you do want to have a little bit of runoff, even with organic, just to keep the root zones nice. I hope that will help anyone else growing in large fabric pots. It's a little different than growing in the ground. I never had this problem in the ground. I want to show you guys this branch here. Explain what happened and maybe save it from happening to you. So you can see the break right here. What happened is I tied it uh, down to the cage like the rest of my low stress training. But I grabbed it a little bit too high up on the new growth. And what happened is the next morning, down here where it's a little more stiff, a little more woody, it actually pulled upwards overnight. And because I had it tied too high on the flexible growth, it allowed it to flex and flex until it snapped right there. So the, the plant kind of super cropped itself. So if you're gonna if you have a really long skinny branch that you're pulling down, I just recommend uh, putting a like maybe two or three uh, pieces of tape on it instead of just one. And then I just took a piece of tape and I tied it up just to give it a little bit of support. You know I show you guys these types of things just so people can learn. I am not one of those types of guy who. Is going to show you all the money shots. That doesn't help anybody learn. What helps people learn is seeing real world issues and knowing how to fix them and watching the plants grow. So that's what it's all about. It's all about learning. It's not about egos. Thanks for watching the video right through to the end. If you like this content and you're not already subscribed, please hit subscribe. I hope you learned something. I hope you were at least entertained. See you guys next time.